So we've got a 2016 FA DAF XF Euro 6 to do today. Now, you might be thinking, why are we halfway through a job? Well, I don't always get called in to do the diagnosis, you see. Now, the customer has already got a new EBS ECU here to replace this EBS ECU. This is what they've diagnosed it as. And to be fair to them, if we look at the actual diagnosis of the fault codes, we've got ECU power supply, voltage critical. Now, if we go to more information, you'll see here it says, replace the EBS central module, which is this. Now, yes, we could have got it repaired, but that's not what the customer's asked for. He wants it replaced. So usually we'd just um, copy and paste the ECU, but unfortunately, if we go to ECU replacement, it doesn't allow us to do that with this. So what we'll have to do is use gel test. So now I've turned the ignition off, we can remove and replace this ECU. So that's the old ECU that will have to go back return to DAF, unfortunately. So we'll hop in now, turn the ignition on, see what it says. So we've got a red brake system truck malfunction. We've got a stability control issue and an ABS malfunction. And adaptive cruise control system malfunction. So this would be because there's no parameters in the new ECU. So we'll just get gel test from Eclipse Diagnostics plugged in now and see what's going on with this new ECU. That always helps. So as you can see from our topology here, we've got a active fault code in EBS3 and other non-active fault codes in the other ECUs. If we just go to the breakdown, you'll see that we've got, if we scoot down here to EBS3, check some parameter data without programming. So if we go into EBS3, I'll show you what I mean. So you might wonder why have we got this issue? So if we go into ECU data, you'll see VIN code and our software number are blank. And if we go into control unit programming and installation variants, you'll see that most probably all the other component groups are also YYYY. So we need to program this basically. So I'll get onto Eclipse now and they can set up central services. Now in order to facilitate this little exchange of information, I've got the battery charger connected. There's a maintainer to maintain 24 volts. So that's what we're gonna do now. We'll just set this to 24 volts manual and then set this to maintain. So hopefully this will give us enough amps. It certainly looks like it'll give us enough amps anyway to maintain 24 volts while this programming is happening. When you purchase the gel test multi-brand package from Eclipse. Good morning Eclipse. Hi, how's things? It's Russell from uh, Truck Tech UK. I've got an EBS3 ECU I could do with programming through central services. It's on a DAF XF 2015. I'm just wondering if uh, I can make a payment and somebody could jump on in Spain and program it for us. So now I've just made a payment on central services. Eclipse will now configure the gel test to be able to receive the program from Spain. So we'll get into that now. To do anything like this, you need serious internet connection speeds and a low latency to go with it. Basically, you can forget mobile phone hotspots and 4 and 5G networks. And with me being mobile, I've gone down the Starlink route to get this done for my customers. A few moments later. So gel test have just terminated the connection with the computer now. Everything's been programmed. The only thing left for me to do now is to check the hardware and the software numbers. We can compare that to before. And then we'll carry out a VSC calibration on the road. So yes, we need to go and do our VSC calibration, which is vehicle stability control. This is involve us driving up the road, uh, 100 meters, I think it is. Then we've got to go through 360 degrees of the steering wheel and that will calibrate our VSC. So we'll start that off now. That's running. We'll go and do our road test. It's 250 meters and 180 degrees. So if we go into our system data now on EBS3 and look at our ECU data, you'll see that we now have a chassis number. And we also have some software, which is brilliant. And if we go into control unit programming and installation variants, you'll see that we have all the component codes now, which is brilliant. So I haven't had to lift a finger. And now we'll go and do our calibration. So I've just turn the van off. I can turn this battery charger off. We really need to get a 24 volt battery maintainer for when I'm doing programming. That's definitely the next thing to get. So this can go back to DAF as an exchange unit. They can refit the new one. We won't be needing the VCI link now. Right, let's get this road test done. So as you can see now, all our warnings have gone off the dip. All we've got up here is the vehicle stability control light. 
So we'll shoot up the road. And hopefully this road test, this light will go out. Well, we've certainly driven it straight long enough. We just need to spin this round in a junction now. This junction will do. Let's spin it round here. There we go. One VSC light's gone off now. Clear dash, happy customer, happy Russell. So the customer's just got to put all this back together here now, underneath the fuse board. I'll put the satellite back in the van and we'll get on to the next job. Remember this LF from the last video? Well, I've gaskets to clean the EGR system out today, but I'm still not convinced. So before we start stripping all this engine down, I'm just going to check over the boost circuits, basically. Now, these pipes are notorious, absolutely notorious for splitting down here. They usually crack, there's a big hole. So what I'm going to do now is just drop the intake off here, start the truck up and blank off the end of the pipe. And we'll see if the circuit is complete and it's holding pressure. So that's our pipe. As you can see, nothing. Nothing at all. We'll just slip this round. That should be better. So what we can do now is put our hand over this, run the truck, and it should build pressure up in this circuit. Hopefully it doesn't pull any crap in there. We should be all right. Right, let's go start the truck. The big question is, how much of an idiot am I to miss that? How did I miss that? When I checked all here for cracks, it was on this side that it had me. The replacement from DAF for this is an actual aluminium pipe instead of a plastic one. It's about 500 quid. So uh, unfortunately the customer's gonna have to put his hand in his pocket. But yeah, there's a crack and a hole. So that's the fault. So we've got a 2016 DAF XF Euro 6 reported engine malfunction light. Let's have a look what we're dealing with. Engine malfunction. And an exhaust system malfunction light. Okie dokie. We'll get JAL test from Eclipse plugged into the OBD socket and see what's going on. Let's get this in. Powers, grounds and can. Let's get on JAL test. So we'll go into auto VIN identification. Euro 6, because it's got a massive exhaust. And then we'll do engine and anti-pollution. So we'll just jump into EAS3. We'll have a look in our fault code reading in our after treatment system now. And we've got regeneration insufficient, our DPF pressure sensor, incorrect or intermittent data, and an inactive fault there for the fuel pressure sensor also. So we'll try and concentrate on this DPF pressure sensor first. We'll have a look at the data for that and see if it's blocked, working, etc. Then we'll try and do a regeneration, ensure that the vehicle is regenerating, and we'll also check that the DPF pressure sensor is working. 
So looking at these measurements, we've got 25 millibar on the DPF pressure sensor and our calculation of the soot level in the DPF based on the pressure sensor is 4.3. I'd say here possibly that the pressure sensor is stuck inside and that's why it's reading 25 millibar because the truck's not running, it should be reading zero. So we'll have a look at that now. So this is a DPF pressure sensor. Unfortunately, this is one I keep on the van for model year 17 onwards, so we need to find a Euro 6 one. So we'll get our faulty DPF pressure sensor off this EAS exhaust system now. These clips are an absolute nightmare. So what I'm gonna do is just split them on these joints for now and we'll do this on a workbench. Right, let's get these off this pressure sensor. So, I find if you push one side on these first and then try and push the other side around you should be able to slide them out they're just a really stupid idea there we go one Two. A bit of patience and you can get them off. So that's for the scrap. So we'll just plug this in and make sure it's reading zero on JAL test before we go any further. Right, that's plugged in. Let's see if it's reading zero. So we'll just throw up uh, engine speed on here. So as you can see now, We've got engine speed and particulate filter differential pressure. If we give it a rev, see it's changing. And as you can see, our calculation of the soot load level based on differential pressure now is dropping. So to give you an idea of what that's doing, if we go to soot filter, where it would be sat here now halfway, this will now drop to clean basically as he's driving down the road because we've been technically fooling the DPF into thinking it's more blocked than it is. So now we know that's fixed our soot level issue in the DPF we'll put these clips on these pipes properly
Now all of a sudden we've got an empty DPF based on soot load calculation from the DPF pressure sensor. So back in our fault codes in PCI we've solved the DPF regeneration insufficient issue really. We've solved the pressure sensor of the particulate filter issue as well. The only thing we've got to look at now is this fuel pressure sensor valid data but below normal operation. So what we'll do now is we'll start a health check and see what sort of fuel pressure we're getting at idle and 1200 RPM. So we'll go into system checks, high pressure circuit, return on the fuel injectors. Yes, we're all right with that. All cylinders working. We've met all the conditions. So now all we need to do is start the truck. So as you could see from that test, we were doing 45% more than we should have been doing there. So our low fuel system pressure isn't keeping up with our high pressure system. Now, yes, it doesn't say anything about injectors. It doesn't say anything about high pressure pumps. All it says is fuel pressure, data valid, but below normal operating test range, I think. So with such a high correctional value, we'll now be looking at possibly injectors, fuel pressure control valve, high pressure unit pumps. You get the idea. I'll go and put this to the customer now, see what he wants to do about it. Well, it looks like we won't be doing any high pressure tests today, unfortunately. The driver's waiting for this, which means he needs to go now. So we'll get the stuff out the truck and he can get gone and we'll do the high pressure test next week. So this afternoon's little project, we've got an AEBS radar. It's made by Wabco, obviously fitted to DAF. Also has Continental marked on it. Interesting. Anyway, this is off a NGD. As you can see, it's rather straight. And also all the casings cracked. Now the customer doesn't want to buy a new one because they are ridiculous money. But what I do have is a second hand one. Different part numbers, different software. But I'm not interested in that. All I want is the insides out of this ECU. Now this has got anti-tamper protection on these bolts in the bottom right hand corner here and there. So I'm going to get that off and hopefully swap all the insides out into this other ECU. And then we can go down to this NGD and see if it works. So now we've got our other cover off this other ABS ECU. Hopefully these pins won't be broke like they were on this one. So, let's get this board out now. As you can see, this board had originally failed due to water ingress. So uh, that's what's gone on with this one. Whether I can uh, get this soaked in some alcohol and clean this up and hopefully sort out any sort of high resistance issues with it. So now I'm going to try and swap this into this casing because it is in better condition and then put this board in this casing and we'll see what happens. So we've got our rebuilt AEBS ECU. We'll uh, plug this in. Right, let's see what we've got going on here. in there let's go slap the ignition on wonder if we've got any fault codes at the moment let's have a look so yeah we've got quite a few at the moment right we'll go jump on gel test see what's going on So we'll hit uh, auto VIN identification and we'll have XG because that's what it is and we'll just do a main system scan because we've got a couple of fault codes on the various systems and we'll see what's going on. 
So this is our topology here for uh, XG, which is uh, DAF's next generation or NGD product. As you can see now, we have after decan a CSG, which is a gateway for the rest of the vehicle before it goes into VECU, whereas before it would just go straight into VECU. A couple of typical uh, NGD faults here in PCI2, such as uh, cylinders one, three, five, six, two, four, you name it, we've got it. But as far as I'm concerned, we'll just delete everything out of this. We know we've got faults with our AEBS, so we'll just go for AEBS, see if we can talk to that now. So we can't talk to that. Can we talk to PCI2? Well, we can talk to PCI2. If we can talk to ABS again. So what we're dealing with here really is a communication issue with the AEBS issue. The issue is when you add secondhand parts in, you start questioning, is it the truck or is it the ECU? Well, I decided to look up the power supply on JAL test as I remembered the broken pins from the start of this video. So, we've still got ABS, vehicle controller malfunction, truck brake system malfunction, adaptive cruise control. We also know that we didn't have any voltage when we went to go into the ECU. So we'll just now check F. What was it? Uh, 5 amp, wasn't it? There. F21. F459 for voltage. So we'll use... This looks good. Right. Have we got any voltage on this 5 amp fuse? There's volts. Nothing. And that's why we didn't have any power at the ECU because the fuse was blown. So we'll put another fuse in and see what happens. Now have we got any comms? So again, oh it's there, ABS. Will you talk to my ABS ECU now? I've got voltage. Of course you will. See, 27 volts. So full code reading, software error, Go away. How's that now? Fault code reading. Software error. Oh dear. This truck really wasn't making things easy for me. But anyone who's had AEBS faults that won't clear knows that the maximum number of forward collision warnings you can have is 255. So what I did here was a quick reset of all the counters. Well, I say quick, it took seven minutes, but this resolved our software error. Have we got any engine warnings? Nothing. With the dash clear, the customer needs to replace the cross member and bolt it all back together, and we can then carry out a calibration to ensure this works correctly. Well, that's another week and a bit wrapped up for you. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a like as it really does help get this video out there. If you've not subscribed, why not? And I'll catch you in the comments down below.